The case of Christine Johnson Missing stands as a haunting enigma, etching its presence as one of the most widely discussed disappearances, sparking discussions, and casting a nationwide spotlight on the mystery that unfolded. Christine Johnson, an ordinary college student, goes missing for 16 mysterious days. Now who is Christine Johnson and what happened during this time? Where did she go? What drove her to vanish and who might be involved in this twisted tale? Could there be a hidden agenda? Or did she stumble upon something that someone wanted to keep buried? Well, stay tuned because, in this thrilling investigation, the answers are as elusive as the shadows that conceal Christine's secrets. Join us as we unravel the enigma surrounding Christine Johnson as we explore the timeline of events leading up to Christine's disappearance and the puzzling clues left behind, which have unearthed a web of dark secrets. Let's begin. Take a close look at the lady with the black hat in this video. The recording is from Los Angeles on February 15th, 2003, featuring 21-year-old Christine Johnson. At first glance, it seems like a regular shopping day at the mall, but there's something unsettling beneath the surface. Just a few hours after this footage was taken, Christine vanished. The key to solving the mystery of her disappearance lies in what she bought during that shopping trip. Now let's delve deeper into the intricate details of this case, unraveling the timeline of events and the profound impact it had on the lives of those involved. In 2001, 20-year-old Christine Johnson made a life-changing decision. Leaving her small town in Saugatuck, Michigan to the bustling landscape of Southern California. Her dream? To finish school and make it big in Hollywood. However, the harsh reality of the movie industry made finding work a challenge, prompting thoughts of returning home. Despite facing challenges in finding work in the movie industry, Christine's determination kept her in Los Angeles where she landed a gig as a production assistant for a new movie. However, sustaining a foothold in the industry proved tough, leading her to take a job at a cell phone company. Undeterred, she continued to chase her Hollywood dreams. Saturday, February 15th, 2003. On a Saturday in 2003, Christine spoke with her mom, Terry, sharing plans for a mall trip. Excitedly, Terry suggested Christine pick out a Valentine's gift for herself. After their conversation, Christine headed to the mall, unknowingly stepping into a chain of events that would alter the course of her life. February 17, 2003. Two days later, worry gripped Terry as she realized she hadn't heard from Christine in over 48 hours. Calls to her daughter's cell phone went unanswered and, to Terry's dismay, Christine hadn't shown up for work. Concerned about her daughter's well-being, Terry and her husband took swift action, contacting the police and filing a missing persons report. With no clue about Christine's whereabouts, her family promptly flies to Los Angeles to join the search and unravel the mystery surrounding her sudden disappearance. Following Christine's disappearance, police shared details with the media launching a widespread search. The community rallied, distributing flyers and raising awareness. Surveillance footage from the Westfield Century City Mall showed Christie making purchases on February 15th, but no clues emerged. Investigators turned to Christie's roommate, who revealed Christie came home after shopping, showed off her new outfit, and left for a movie audition. The roommate lacked details on the audition's location, prompting a search through Christie's phone records. Phone records showed Christy called an information line in Laurel Canyon at 5 o'clock p.m. on February 15th. 
A witness reported Christie seeking directions to a house in a white Miata, shedding light on her movements. However, this lead didn't yield further clues about what happened next. Suspecting someone Christie knew might be involved, her parents recalled a past domestic violence incident with an ex-boyfriend. The ex-boyfriend, questioned by police, had an alibi corroborated by multiple sources, leading to a dead end. February 20th, 2003 Five days later, Susan Murphy contacts the police after seeing Christie's article. She shares a similar encounter with a man less than a month before Christie's disappearance. Claiming to be involved in the new James Bond movie, the man attempted to recruit her for an audition, specifying a dress code that eerily mirrors Christie's purchases on February 15th. A white shirt, a mini skirt, nylons, and stiletto heels. Detective Virginia Obenchain recognizes this as a significant breakthrough in the case. She shares details with the police, aiding in the creation of a composite sketch which was then broadcast nationwide. February 24th. Nine days post-disappearance, Christie's car is found in a hotel valet lot. Detectives informed her parents immediately, raising concerns about Christie's well-being. Upon finding Christie's car in a hotel valet lot, investigators discover only her cell phone inside. The valet reports a man brought the car to the lot on February 16th, a day after her disappearance. The mounting evidence suggests something may have gone drastically wrong, urging an urgent search for Christie. This case is a stark example of someone exploiting the system over an extended period. It's not about naivete, but about a repeat predator. We're dealing with an evil individual who needed to be stopped, unfortunately with Christie as the turning point. Despite circumstantial evidence mounting against him, Victor Palelogos accepts a plea deal to avoid the death penalty. However, he stuns everyone by later writing an 11-page letter to withdraw his guilty plea. Ultimately, on September 15, 2006, he received a 25-year-to-life sentence for Christy Johnson's murder. The strength of the women who recognized parallels in Christie's story coming forward together halted a serial predator's decade-long spree. Although they didn't know Christy, their actions brought answers and closure for her family. Today, these women advocate for victims of sexual assault, emphasizing the power of coming forward and sharing their stories for justice.